Welcome back. I'm going to do a it, what I think is kind of an interesting concept that uh, Retro Slasher came up with, which was to look at um, or pick out from A to Z a representative horror film that can be either your favorite horror film or um, in, from your collection. So I think I'm going to I'm going to do my list A to Z. Uh, but it's not necessarily, the films I picked aren't necessarily what I'd consider the best out of the alphabet or, or even ones that, um, that I like the best. Um, in some cases it is, but in others I'm trying to pick things, films that maybe aren't represented as, or, uh, don't get the recognition that maybe they deserve something a little bit different than just the normal titles that would, that everyone would typically pick out of the alphabet. So I wanted to do a little bit different than the norm. So I'll go ahead and get started here uh, with A. My A is going to be angst. I think this is the best uh, character study of a slasher uh, serial killer that uh, has ever been made, in my opinion. A lot of other good ones, but I think this one... I think this one is, they run a distant second to angst. So, yeah, that's my A. <clears throat> my B is the classic Mario Bava Black Sunday. I have three copies of this, believe it or not. I'll, I'll cover those when I'm showing my Euro section of my collection. But, yeah, this is the Arrow release, outstanding release. Uh, this is the movie that kind of put Barbara Steele on the map, and uh, it's really one of, it's probably Bravo. I, I mean, I consider Bay of Blood a masterpiece, too. He's had a lot of masterpieces, but this this one really put Bava and Barbara Steele on the map. Great movie. For the Seas, I picked my favorite werewolf movie. I think this is the best werewolf movie ever and that is Oliver Reed and Curse of the Werewolf uh, I love this film I wish Hammer had done I wish this film had kicked off a series of Hammer related werewolf films like it did Dracula but it did not unfortunately um, but yeah this is the steelbook <clears throat> I know it's probably heresy to pick anything other than Lon Chaney Jr. I love Lon Chaney Jr. and Wolfman, but I just feel like that Oliver Reed took it up a notch in his portrayal. Um, for D, I'm going to cheat a little bit here because in America we call this Horror of Dracula, but I'm going to go with the, the, the British uh, descriptor, which is Dracula. This is Christopher Lee's Premier preeminent role is Dracula, and uh, I think it's an outstanding film. One of obviously it's one of Chris Lee's best films of all time, and one of the greatest Dracula films of all time. Probably number two, in my opinion, probably number two behind Klaus Kinski's Nosferatu. But uh, he, this one's hard to beat. <clears throat> e, the only film. Really, the only film I saw as uh, a youngster that scared the shit out of me, and the only film that today still gives me the willies. Can't I can't really watch this uh, by myself. Just I can't do it. And that is The Exorcist. Yeah, well, I mean, we all know about this film, and uh, it's a. Uh, it certainly set the standard for uh, what a horror film was going to look like after the 70s when this movie came out. Horror, the horror films were not the same. I think that film, and certainly Texas Chainsaw Massacre, changed the face of horror from the, from the mid-70s going forward. Uh, F. F is a fog with John Carpenter. I, I saw this in the theater. And, uh, you know, I was kind of lukewarm about it. Um, I was kind of a horror snob when I was younger. 
prior to my early 20s and beyond, I was like, or early 20s and prior, I was much more into um, Universal and Hammer and anything that was current. I was like, uh, I've, I've changed my opinion significantly with age. And this film is, uh, I love this film a whole lot. This is, as does most people, I think the Fog, John Carpenter's Fog is a classic. So there you go. That's my F. My G is a Larry Cohen film. God told me to. I love this film. And uh, <clears throat> this is a great uh, horror slasher. I call it a, ser a horror serial killer kind of film. With um, uh, It's got some paranormal or elements to it it's it's just it's just a really really interesting film toby tony libianco uh, is in this film and he's he's excellent i love this film my h is a, is what i believe is the most underrated slasher film ever hell high Late 80s slasher, and I consider it certainly one of the top 10 slasher films of all time. Is Hell High. Outstanding film. Loved it to death. And this, this release has uh, Joe Bob Briggs commentary, which is priceless. My J is also a slasher film that I think is uh, one of the best. And a lot of people think it's so, too. I think the only... Uh, aspect of it that it probably gets it lower down on the rankings is because of the, the lack of um, kills, but it's just before dawn. Uh, Jeff Lieberman's classic. This is a this is a great, suspenseful, intelligent uh, slasher film, in the woods slasher film. Uh, and the ending is, you know, classic. What's the K? K, I'm picking uh, a, a, a British 70s horror film, uh, Killer's Moon. Don't hear a lot of people talk about this redemption release, Killer's Moon, but um, it's an interesting psycho killers on the loose chasing women around. Uh, you know, it's, it's got the, it's a, <clears throat> it's a British film that I don't hear people talk too much about. And I liked it a lot. I think it's a good movie. Killer's Moon. L, this is going to, uh, I consider this film, uh, in many respects, better than American Psycho. And maybe one of the best um, serial killer portrayals ever. You know, I've already talked about angst. Henry Portrait of a Silver Killer certainly is up there. Shram. But uh, American Psycho is the... After that, I think it's American Psycho. But this one probably beats it out, for me anyway. And that is Jack Ketchum's The Lost. Uh, Mark Singer in this is incredible. He's just a batshit crazy dude. And, uh, you know, everybody that runs into him pays a, <laughs> pays a wicked price. I just... This is, you, I really highly recommend, if you haven't seen Jack Ketchum's The Lost, do yourself a favor and watch it. Hey, did I skip, uh, I, I think I, I did skip, maybe, let's see, I got these things out of order. Yeah, I forgot to do J. Uh, sorry about that. I did. Well, I did. Uh, I did J. I forgot to do I. Uh, here's my I. That was I saw the devil. I love this. this is Asian man. What a great Asian horror film this is. This is um, a serial killer being pursued by a cop. Oh my gosh, this is just awesome, awesome film. Ten out of ten. I saw the devil. So, yeah, J is just for Don K. <clears throat> I should have put these in some kind of order, alphabetical order before I started. I just kind of 
throw him on the ground here. Uh, all right, M is next, and that goes to the award goes to Peter Laurie and M Fritz Lang's classic. This is Criterion release, and uh, M is uh, you know the another serial killer portrayal, and uh, probably. One of Peter Laurie is certainly one of Peter Laurie's defining roles. Uh, he's outstanding in this. Incredible. Great movie. A classic. M. N. N is kind of a film that there's a lot of. I'm going to pick one that probably most people wouldn't pick. Um, but I really have a high regard for this film. And that is Near Dark. With uh, This is the vampire film. That uh, I think is highly, highly underrated, and uh, yeah, I think if you yeah if you haven't seen Near Dark, you really ought to give it a shot. It's a great movie. It looks from the I think the cover kind of sucks. It looks kind of like a Twilight film. It's not. It's not anything like the teenage Twilight film. <clears throat> oh, where's my O? O is going to go to Dario for opera. Uh, I think opera is a classic, and uh, it's kind of, I think, underrated when you look at the spectrum of the Argento films in this period. I don't think this one gets enough love, so I picked opera. P is going to go to Pieces, uh, and Susan George is screaming fit in this film. This film is just batshit crazy. I mean, you got Susan George going nuts, um, screaming out bastard. <laughs> it's hilarious. I think every time I think about it, it's hilarious. Uh, and the kills in this are just epic. You know, it's just a, it's just an awesome, awesome slasher film. Q, and Larry Cohen's on my list twice. It says Q, the Winged Serpent. Uh, I think this is a classic film. Uh I don't know many um, cheesy monsters on the loose uh, in the city that are done as well as this uh, without just being laughable. This is this is really a good film. Excellent. Michael Moriarty is great in that. R. I uh, went with the classic Rosemary's Baby. I love this film. And uh, the ending is just powerful. It's just a slow burn one of the best slow burn horror films ever. So yeah, Rosemary's Baby. S. Dario's on here twice for the classic 10 out of 10 Suspiria. Not much to say about this film other than it's one of the best horror films in a, ever. You know, um, it'd be you'd be hard pressed to pick another film that beats this. So yeah, Suspiria. <laughs> I know uh, Cellular Terror considers that the best, his favorite of all time. T. T is going to go to my buddy, my buddies Rainer Fassbender and Uli Lamel for Tenderness of the Wolves. Another classic serial. I, I, man, I got a. There's a running theme of these picks. I didn't even realize it, but I've got. Uh, these serial killer portrayal films uh, are just permeating my list here. I wasn't even thinking about it till now. But yeah, this is uh, Tenderness of the Wolves. I think this is Uli Mamel's best film. And uh, Rainer Fassbender had a produ production. He was a, a, kind of a production credit on it. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is an outstanding film and uh, very disturbing. Uh, a lot of disturbing images, but uh, well done. Great cinematography. Excellent acting. Uh, my you. What did I do with my you? Hang on a minute, guys. Where's my you? Criterion release of the uninvited. 
Talked about this one yesterday. I love this ghost story film. Excellent. Awesome, awesome stuff. Not invited. V is going to go to Carl Dreyer's Vampire. Uh, one of the most atmospheric gothic films. I mean, it's, you know, this film, along with, of course, Nosferatu, had the Dr. Caligari, uh, kind of set the stage for gothic horror. I mean, it, this set the standard for visual imagery in horror films, in my opinion. This is a very, very atmospheric and spooky film. This feels like a nightmare. Excellent film. W is going to go to Bela Lugosi's greatest role, and that's White Zombie. I thought I think this is his greatest role. Not that uh, he wasn't great as uh, Igor, you know, but you know, but I just consider this his best role, and I think it's uh, an underrated classic. It doesn't get the attention it deserves. White Zombie. X is going to go to. A hospital slasher, X-Ray, with uh, Barbie Benton, the play, playboy playmate. Uh, yeah, this is a fun slasher film set in a hospital and uh, very entertaining. Y is going to go to <laughs> yesterday, so I've covered S through Z in my collection. And uh, I got to this film and couldn't find the Blu-ray of it. That's because it's called The Crypt of the Living Dead. Uh, I've always, I grew up knowing it as Young Hannah, Queen of the Vampires, when I, when I saw it at the drive-in. But yeah, so Young Hannah gets the, gets the Y, or Crypt of the Living Dead in this case, the Blu-ray. Uh, Z is going to go to another film we talked about yesterday, which is uh, another serial killer Chasing chase film. That's Zodiac. I thought this was an outstanding, outstanding uh, crime drama chase about a serial killer, uh, real based on true events. Of course, loved it. So that is my A to Z. I wasn't totally prepared. I should have stacked those alphabetically, but uh, other than a little slip up with I, uh, that is my A to Z list, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.